Alright, so good morning guys. So our topic for today is about media then and now. Okay, so in this lesson, you will discover how media evolved in the world. Okay, so sabi dito, nothing exists in a vacuum. Okay, so all things on this earth had a process of evolution. So lahat tayo, nag, lang, bawat bagay sa earth, uh, nag-transform with what we call evolution. Parang yung tao, di ba? From dating, uh, parang mukha tayo, uh, caveman, until sa modern day na tao na kung ano tsura natin ngayon. Okay? So, nothing is also created or manufactured at random. For each and every creation was born out of need to fill a gap or to improve an existing condition. Such is the case for media. Okay? So, the gadget you are holding in your hand might not be there. Yung mga smartphone na hawak nyo ngayon. Had it not been for the entrepreneurial, artistic, mathematic, or scientific acumen of certain individuals, who aim to serve humanity in their own unique and humble way. Okay? So, every new thing has a beginning. It is always important to look back at history in order to understand how things work in the present. Okay? So, we're tapping nga natin is a brief history of media. So, ever since the first human beings evolved on planet Earth, communicating with each other is one of the most essential and immediate need that they had to learn to develop and master the things that they do or the things that we do okay so this is to convey information okay they want to share and get the information they also need and whatever there's a need for information and communication we know or we now know that certain kinds of media should also be present in order to help facilitate this basic human need okay so we'll begin with different i will talk about different ages on the evolution of media so firstly we're going to talk about uh the media under pre-industrial age okay so when human beings learn how to control their body okay? so when human beings learn how to control their body parts to be able to talk language okay is one of the first thing that the brain develop and enhance okay so thus we could consider oral traditions as the basic ancestor of information and communication flow not only was language essential to use for everyday life it is also developed humans into having more complex thought okay so this is the reason why asian civilizations and older cultures have a tradition of passing down stories through the through what we call oral means ayun may nakikita niyo sa screen natin through oral means okay so even specific art forms such as poetry especially epic poems have their roots in oral traditions okay it is only upon the invention naman of writing when some of the orally handed down stories and information were recorded okay so nung uh one time ito mga archaeologists oh, who also found evidence that early human beings were also able to communicate through writing symbols nung panahon ng mga caveman okay so, uh, they were able to communicate through writing symbols, as you can see on the screen, okay? Or drawing crude pictures. For example, ito ngayon sa screen natin, the Chauvet cave paintings, which were discovered in southern France, okay? This shows evidence of symbols etched onto the walls dating back more than 30,000 years ago. And this shows that as humans, we have this basic tendency to record what goes on around us so we also have this need to document our experiences so that others could learn or improve from them this is also or this is also to help facilitate our daily life transactions so noon pa man paano pa nung caveman meron na tayong instinct na gusto nating i-record yung mga nangyayari sa paligid natin so these were their media back then so dati oral oral tradition diba in the way how people communicate information is through their language sa pagsasalita nga. Tapos ito nga sa mga kiban, they were able to record or think of a way to record information or data or memories by drawing crude pictures and symbols on the walls of the cave where they live. Okay? Maliban doon nga, matutong tayong magsulat, dun, which is also one way of, or means of human beings to record memories 
or information. Okay? So, dati, kumbaga, yung pag uh, mag kwento na gustong i-pass down yung isang tao, yung ginagawa niya, is to allow memorize niya yung kwento, tapos ikukwento niya doon sa tao. Ang downside kasi ng oral tradition is that kapag hindi mo masyadong master yung story, lalo kung history yung sinasabi mo, nag-change yung information. Okay? Hindi ka gaya ngayon pag na-record mo na, hindi niya magbabago kung ano yung na-record mo, yun na yun. Okay, di ba? Different regions of the earth develop varied ways of recording human transactions and memory. Okay? Tribal cultures naman, kagaya na nakikita natin ngayon sa screen, uh, those found in Africa, South America, or Native America use materials they found in nature to record their existence. So, gumamit sila ng mga early recording devices. Ano itong mga to? Yung bark of trees, ayan, nakita niyo sa screen, bones of animals, or sticks painted on with nature found substances were used as recording devices of information. Okay? So, similar materials were also found in the Asian regions. Ano to? Yan, yung stone tablets. Okay? Stone tablets. So, early evidence of more formal looking recordings could be tracked or traced back to ancient Mesopotamia, also known as the cradle of Western civilization, located within the former tigris Euphrates River system. See? So, in the region where modern-day Iraq Kuwait and parts of Syria, Turkey, and Iran are now located. May na discover na clay and stone tablets, okay, that have some form of symbolic impressions that make up ancient languages. So ano to mato? The most important discovery of such is called the Code of Hammurabi or the Code of Hammurabi, dating back, okay, to 1772 BCE. It contains written laws and codes of the Babylon, the Babylonian king named Hammurabi, okay who ruled during those ancient times, okay? From writing in stones and clay humans naman, okay, were able to develop other materials for documentation. So, kanina, may bark of trees, bones of animals, okay, doon nila nila record information, so sticks, okay, tapos yung panahon nga sa ancient regions, sa ancient regions, si uh, Babylonian king, si King Hammurabi, uh, pinalagay yung code Hammurabi sa stone tablets or clay tablets, okay? Until such time, ito namang mga Egyptians came okay, with the discovery of papyrus by ancient Egyptians and other forms of writing tools. This eventually led to the advent of paper. Okay? The new inventions spread into other parts of the world, making the recording and documenting of human life more extensive and profound. And this is because sa pagkakaibento nga ng, ng Egyptians, ng papyrus or yung old age paper, the modern paper na ginagamit natin, ang pinakalolo niya kung bagay is ito nga papyrus and we are very thankful with the Egyptians because of this invention okay so indeed the written word could be considered as the greatest tool that human beings used to communicate with each other during those times learning how to write words down prompted civilizations to discover newer devices that help develop our modern day media okay. back then new newer forms of media were just born such as handwritten books which were developed and marketed into consumer items. However, okay, the laborious task of replicating books by hand copying proved too tedious and costly. Kasi yung mga books nun sinusulat, handwritten. Okay? So, very tedious siya, very laborious, tapos it cost a lot. So, nung back then, yung time na yun, yung mga mayayaman lang may access sa libro, educational materials. Kasi nga, sila lang yung makaka-afford kasi nga mahal. So, sila lang nag educated yung mga noble people back then. As a result, the nobility or the upper class citizens had more access to wealth of educational printed materials adding to the existing inequality in social classes. But, while that is happening in East Asia naman, there is this what they call woodblock printing. Ayan yung nasa screen. Woodblock printing which was developed around 200 CE. Okay? Uh, when Chinese and Koreans Crafts people wrote letters on textiles or paper using letters carved onto wood blocks. Okay? Imagine each letter or character of the various Chinese language is etched onto wood blocks. Then they use ink and press it on surface. In the year 1040 naman, okay, the movable type was invented. Okay, ayan. So the movable type was invented, replacing the system of wood block in certain areas in the region. But the most important contribution to revolutionizing the printing press is German goldsmith Johann Gutenberg. Ayan si Johann Gutenberg. Ayan yung device niya kung makita niya sa screen na naimbento niya. Improvement of the movable type 
printing press. Using his skills and knowledge in metals, he created a better version of the movable type in 1453. Okay? So the relatively fewer letters of the English alphabet, as opposed to the more intricate Chinese characters, contributed to the early success of this invention. And because his printing press could mass produce many pages in a given day, the printing of books became cheaper and faster. So mas naging accessible na siya sa mga tao yung mga, edu mga books, especially yung mga educational books. As a result, the cost of books and printed matter less and making it more affordable to more people from various walks of life. Mayaman man yan, mahirap. Okay? So this form of mass media production revolutionized the way Europe and the Western civilization developed and spreading towards other worlds, parts of the world. It also led to more reinvention that ushered the human race into modernity. Okay? So after pre-industrial age, we will move naman now to industrial age. Okay? So under industrial age, ano bang characters now? When civilization started embracing more to technological advances, like the Gutenberg printing press, the world was ushered into the industrial age. The harnessing of electricity for daily use was also characteristic of this age as some of the technological inventions developed with various electricity-related experimentation, also characterized by social change, politically motivated movements, and rapid, rapid economic development. So this age clearly saw the active role of technology, okay, of technology in advancing the way we communicate and disseminate information, okay? So this is evident the way the world shifted gears from gears from being a predominantly agricultural economy towards a more industrialized econ economy. This means the evolution of factories, assembly line workflows, and devising mechanism that would speed up the production of one you, what human beings needs. Thus, humans and machinery were hand in hand okay, towards advancing the world into this new age. Okay? So, alright, so due to the mass producing printing press, newspapers were soon developed, allowing citizens access to news and information that affected sectors of their lives. For instance, the very first newspaper was printed in the late 1590s okay, in Western Europe. This form of media reached America in 1690, while the first newspaper advertisement naman appeared in 1704. So, nakadiscover sila ng way para kumita or matustusan yung the, the way how they produce newspaper. So, nagkaroon sila ng idea na maglagay ng advertisement. Okay, which nangyari, di ba sa mga TV, pag nanonood tayo, may mga commercial. Sa so, YouTube, may mga commercial. So, the first advertisement appeared on a magazine in 1741 or in a newspaper, I mean. Okay? Ang mag the first magazine naman appeared in 1741 as America also prepared to enshrine their constitution naman in 1790, that, to think that the precursor of the newspaper is the proliferation of politically ripe printed pamphlets in Europe during the 1500s. It is no surprise that modern-day newspapers primarily highlighted information that concerned political and government concerns related to its in the recording and the invention of photography also began during these eras under the industrial age. So many individuals from different industrialized nations were tinkering with their respective photographic invention. But it was Frenchman Louis Daguerre who, in 1839, somehow ushered what we know now of photography, okay, with his daguerreotype system of capturing images, okay, in flat copper plate sheet. This was the precursor of the modern day Polaroid, okay, the modern day Polaroid one photo per shot system that were popular in the 1970s, okay. So, ito yung itsura ng Polaroid na kinagamit. And this is how Polaroid works. You just watch the short video clip. In the 1930s, Edwin H. Land conceived of the idea of producing a photographic process that was so simple, one would simply click the shutter and the photograph would come out fully processed. In 1947, he mostly realised this vision and the Polaroid was born. Initially, the process required the user to peel away the negative from the positive print, but over time, the process developed and this was no longer necessary. 
However, it was not until 1963 that instant colour was available through Polar Colour. Polaroid produced both cameras and film. The film enabled direct positives to be produced. This means that the camera effectively produces a negative and turns it into a positive within the camera. The photograph that prints out is the end result of that process. As the works are direct positives, people using Polaroid film do not need to take their works to the factories or shops to have them processed. There is therefore an element of secrecy and privacy, but also it's exciting instant, able to capture and hold a photograph of the scene before you straight away. The immediacy of the prints also means that they can be used to test photographs for shoots, ensuring the light and composition works before committing to taking photographs with other processes. This is something that can be seen in the V&A's collection of works by Glenn Luckford, a renowned fashion photographer, showing both the test Polaroids and the final photograph. The instantaneity meant the processes were used as a means of quick, artistic expression by artists including Andy Warhol, Dado Moriano and Linda McCartney. The V&A collection includes a series of large-scale Polaroids taken within the V&A Museum, including a series by Helen Chadwick entitled Meat Portraits, showing highly considered still compositions of fabric, meat and other props. The rich colour of the Polaroids enhances the image. Polaroids can be highly light sensitive and are prone to fading and colour change when exposed to light. Display of these objects therefore has to be carefully considered. Polaroids also scratch very easily and their surface shows marks such as fingerprints. They should therefore be handled carefully with gloves. There has been a recent resurgence of interest in Polaroid camera, film and the overall aesthetic. A new generation are being introduced to the wonder of taking a photograph and relatively instantaneously holding that material, tactile photograph in your hand. Okay, so that's how the Polaroid works. Now moving on, uh, let's other systems of capturing more pictures were developed, but none stood out like George Eastman's improvement of the rolled and perforated celluloid film to go with his camera. Okay, so Eastman invented the first easy-to-use handheld camera, and in the screen, natin, to go with his camera. So in uh, Eastman invented the first easy-to-use handheld camera called the Kodak camera, making photography accessible to the masses in 1888 okay then other technologies technological advancement that led to our modern day media could be traced to the invention of the ayan as a skin the invention of the telegraph invented by samuel morse in 1844 this allowed the rapid transfer of messages via wires and cable okay as the sender encoded the information and the receiver decoded it at the other end from mere decoded messages, the human voice was the next to be delivered to the wires upon the invention of the telephone man by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. It is 76. Okay? So this is how the telegraph works. <laughs> The age of instant communication was born on January 11, 1838 in Morristown. It was on that date that Samuel Morse and Alfred Vail first demonstrated the electric telegraph at Vail's Speedwell Ironworks. The telegraph was nothing short of a revolution, enabling messages to be sent much faster than previous means, which relied on messengers riding on horseback. Rapid communication served as the foundation for the nation's economic expansion in the 19th century. New Jersey was at the center of the new telecommunications network, linking the major cities along the East Coast. The electric telegraph went on to play a key role in developing New Jersey's reputation for innovation. Thomas Edison's universal stock ticker and his quadruplex telegraph, enabling four messages to be sent on a single wire, incorporated the new technology. Edison's successes with these inventions provided him the means to build his renowned Menlo Park Research Facility. And it all started with the dots and dashes of the electric telegraph. So that was how the telegraph was invented.
Okay, and when you use as a communication back then. Okay. Tapos after that, okay, um uh, the man All right. So after that, from mere decoded messages, the human voice was the next to be delivered to the wires upon the invention of the telephone by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. Okay. Now, the prolific Thomas Edison. Okay. So napakatalino ni Edison. The prolific Thomas Edison experimented with recording sound and music with his invention of the phonograph. In 1877. So, yun yung ng pornograph niya yun. It records sounds and music. But the per All right. So, but the person who was successfully developed a sound and music recording system was Emil Berliner. Okay? So, in 1877, he created the gramophone system which played back music recorded on flat disc or record. So, ito yung precursor ng modern day turntable. The manually operated turntable was improved upon the invention of a motor system by Elrich Johnson, okay? Making hand cranking operation a thing of the past, okay? So this is how the turntable got mechanized system dial jan, okay? So now, let's watch a short video clip, okay? How uh, the turntable works. The turntable. <laughs> For the committed music lover, nothing beats a vinyl record sound. So how can this 21st century version of an old school technology sound better than digital downloads? 240 precision built parts work in unison. Two interlocking zinc alloy spinning platters are perfectly balanced for maximum stability. The stylus follows the record's groove with extreme precision. But what transforms the tiny bumps and valleys on the plastic into music? A pure carbon stylus navigates the tiny fluctuations in the vinyl's groove. The stylus sits on the end of a cantilevered arm that vibrates a super light miniature copper coil back and forth. As the coil moves between two magnets, it generates an electric current. The current drives a mini amplifier and both of the speakers to create that classic vinyl sound. The stylus can reproduce music exactly as it is played in the studio. That's as long as the record spins at a constant speed without any wobbles. The zinc alloy platter rotates on a lubricated single point bearing to cut friction as it spins. So even dancing feet won't make this record jump as it plays uninterrupted music all night long. Thanks to the dedication of the craftsmen and engineers who make these turntables, they produce a sound that rivals anything the digital age has to offer. Okay, so that's how um, turntable works. Okay, now next, Edison naman came up with the incandescent light bulb. Okay, so nakita niya, napakalaki ng contribution ni uh, Thomas Edison with the development of media okay, or how media is produced and how media is used okay so edison also tinkered with another media film okay as his invention of the incandescent light bulb was a huge contribution to the filmmaking technology especially in the playback mechanism on a wider screen kasi dahil sa invention na to nagawa or na invento yung way on how film can be projected on a wide screen kagaya ng modern day uh, projector na ginagamit natin sa mga computer natin or yung mga modern day projector na ginagamit sa mga movie house kagaya ng mga uh, sinian sa SM. The light bulb was used as a part of the film projector he was using. So previously Edison invented the kinetoscope. Okay? Ayan, ang turn the kinetoscope. A single viewer film system which allowed the person to individually watch short films by peeping through the bulky kinetoscope machinery. Okay? So this is how it works. Tingnan niyo na yung short clip natin. Silent nga lang siya kasi recorded siya sa old camera back then, yung cinematograph.
So while you're watching, several European and American inventors were also working on parallel cinematic projects during the 1700s and 1800s. Okay? However, guys, however, the credit for the first public commercial screening of a film, okay, similar to the system we know today, yung the way how films are being screened, di ba, bago ito palabas ng full blast sa mga sinian, goes to the French brothers, ayun sa screens, the French brothers, Auguste and Louis Lumiere, okay, Auguste and Louis Lumiere, when they premiered their short documentary film, A Rivier de Un Train en Gare a La Chetat, or in English, Arrival of a Train at La Chetat Station, okay, in pa at a Paris Cafe in 1895. They used their invention called the cinematograph, which had the capacity of a film camera to record images and the capacity of a film projector to project the film onto a big screen. The following year, the Lumiere brothers opened the first theater dedicated to screening films called the cinema. Okay? So, ito naman is how, a video clip of how uh, the cinematography works and how it recorded. Meanwhile, the production model of the Lumiere camera, the cinematograph, was being built by an engineer in Paris, Jules Carpentier. The Lumieres kept demanding last-minute modifications, but at the same time, they were desperate for the delivery of the first batch of 25. Don't worry, Carpentier assured them, the machine is a marvel. The cinematograph was indeed compact, versatile, and surprisingly simple to operate. A wooden magazine fed film through the gate. The handle was turned at the back. The focal length of the lens was one inch to give the same perspective as the human eye. The Lumiere film, with its round pinholes, could be threaded in seconds. And that wasn't all. The cinematograph could run raw stock through in parallel with negative film to make a new copy print. And by simply adding an arc light and changing the lens, the cinematograph camera come printer could also become a projector. With the whole business in one box, the Lumieres were now ready to go public. Okay, so that was the cinematograph uh, by the Lumiere brothers, August and Lou. Louis, okay? From the combined inventions naman of the telegraph and the telephones, different scientists and engineers tinkered with these technologies as they work on the precursor of the modern day radio, okay? So the Scottish physicist, and sa picture niya sa, sa screen, James Clerk Maxwell experimented with electromagnetic waves or what we call radio waves in 1873, while a German physicist naman, si Heinrich Hertz demonstrated the first transmission of these radio waves in 1887. Okay? So individually, Frenchman Edward Branley naman and English physicist Oliver Lodge respectively work on a improving radio wave frequency transmission of both the transmitter and receiver technologies. And all of these innovations were taken up and improved upon in America by Guglielmo Marconi in 1894, who was the first person to recognize the commercial viability of the radio system, okay? So first, uh, yung radio system, first used in the maritime industry at the onset of the 1900s until it got heavy communication information usage during World War I. Radio then, naman, became part of a mainstream society when the use became commercial, a commercial one. Its entertainment value was explored beginning in the 1900s. 20s, okay, from radio, the radio's original purpose to improve people's communication process, it used cross to spreading entertainment elements, okay, from communication, ginamit na siya for entertainment purposes. So the term broadcast began its usage from radio to signify this one-way type of sending messages or information to a wider audience, okay. If radio played a part in World War I, World War II's beginnings coincided with the first public broadcast of television naman. So before we, war broke out, different individuals were also tinkering with radio waves using precursors of television components. Okay? But this time, 
they were trying to broadcast not only the human voice but images as well. So dito na dumitaw si American na or nakilala si American si Philo Farnsworth who, who holds the credit of making the first television transmittal of a picture in 1927. Okay? So in 1930 he received the first patent for the electronic television. So in 1934 he made a public demonstration of the early prototype of the television. So, ayan yung early prototype na kikita natin sa screen natin. Okay? Now, here naman is a short uh, broadcasting history. TV then and now. Did you know it was 90 years ago this very week that the BBC began broadcasting its very first scheduled TV service from Alexandra Palace in North London. So, I've come here to the National Media Museum in Bradford for a look at a bit of TV history. If you tuned in that very first week, you'd have been enjoying programmes like the variety show Starlight, starring top comedian Leonard Henry. No, not that one. Or London Character, starring W.J. Smith, the whistling guard. Or that perennial favourite, In Signs, Through the Ages. Riveting stuff. And you'd have been in a pretty select bunch. Only about 500 households had the technology to receive those early broadcasts. And you'd have needed one of these behemoths in your living room. This would have set you back around 63 guineas, which equates to 11,000 pounds in today's money. And you had to live within about 25 miles of the Ali Pali transmitter. You know, it's amazing it ever comes on. My name's Ian Baird, and I'm an associate curator at the National Media Museum. Well, a lot of the televisions uh, uh, that were first available in 1936 uh, had such a long picture tube that they orientated it vertically, and you would watch on a 45-degree mirror. So you're actually watching the mirror on the top of the television rather than the screen itself. And you would be dressed up quite often because it was like a night at the theatre. They didn't think of television as staying in. So they would actually show in a lot of the advertising and publicity material people in full evening suits watching a, a television program. And they thought of it as uh, quite an occasion. And it really wasn't like it is today where it's affordable to everyone. It was quite exclusive because the television set was very expensive. But quickly, television technology improved and the prices fell. By 1953, over two million households had a TV licence. ITV arrived in 1955, followed by BBC Two in 1964 and the launch of Channel Four in 1982. And in those days, of just three or four channels, the whole family would crowd around a single set and enjoy the same programme together. Popular shows could regularly command audiences of over 20 million. But that all began to change with the arrival of this, the video cassette. For the first time, people could tape a show and watch it when they wanted. Viewers could choose when to view and what to watch. And in the early 90s, viewer choice exploded with the arrival of the Sky Network. Initially, it offered four more channels that soon multiplied to over 200. At the start of this century, TV entered another new phase of growth. As the World Wide Web grew up and computers became more powerful, it became possible to broadcast high-definition sound and pictures on the Internet. And in 2005, the phenomenally successful YouTube was launched, enabling anyone to broadcast themselves. Jump to the present, and the new entertainment package from Now TV provides instant and easy access to a range of entertainment channels, hundreds of movies on demand, and pay as you go access to live sports on multiple devices, all taking advantage of the rapid growth in broadband connectivity. So, from this to this, TV's certainly come a long, long way. Now, where can I put that remote control? So that was the industrial age. So next we're going to move on to the electronic age. Okay. So while the major major related technologies, technological development of the industrial age heavily utilized electricity, the world was not yet ushered into the electronic age upon the invention of such gadgetry and devices. Perhaps an overlap in the industrial age and electronic age happened when human beings realized the importance and relevance of information as a commodity. So this means, guys, so this means that messages or pieces of information exchange from one hand to other with some form of cost or economic transactions connected to it. So, ito na yung time na kailangan mong mag-spend the money to come up to, uh, to use or 
to use media or to produce media at the same time. Okay? So does the electronic age is also characterized by the way humans consume information in a rapidly developing pace, leading us towards what they call the information society. Okay? So this was first evident with upon the utilization of the telegraph. Okay? So since the transfer of information from one point to another became fast and instantaneous. Okay? So communication in itself became a form of industry, with information being so sole valuable product. Then the development of fax machine and the cell phone also resulted in a faster way of transmitting messages, causing telegraph to eventually die. Okay? So soon cable and satellite technologies also paved the way for faster transmittal of media content, whether for information or entertainment purposes. This development also led to the communication being separated from other industries such as transportation okay, before the delivery of goods from one point to another encompassed the use of physical transportation, transportation, electronic signals or waves, and wired or even wireless technology soon discarded the need for physical transport. Okay? So with the development of the broadcast industry, particularly the expansion of radio and televisions, we reached the term mass media. Okay? which took its full effects as it changed the habits of various cultures, especially in the 1950s and 1960s, okay? Yet, music and film will not be left behind, okay? So on the contrary, the development of personal electronic gadgets and recorders paved the way for more access to media, okay? So nagaroon ng yan yung mga cables and satellites. Music saw naman, the development of the earlier pornograph this into vinyl records. Okay, yun nasa screen. The, the magnetic tape which produced the open track player and the cassette tape and later on converted the data and stored in compact discs or CDs. Okay, portable gadgets like the Sony Walkman or the Sony Disman revolutionized the way we carried our music with us. As for film, there were also tape formats like the VHS and disc formats like the short live laser disc, VCDs and now DVDs, but as soon as media products could be converted digitally into intangible data, another era ushered in the digit, digital age. So, ito na yung generation ngayon, the digital age, okay? So, the digital age refers to our current age where information is still seen as a commodity, yet its mode of recording, storage, delivery, and playback relies heavily on digital technology, okay? So, digital technology encompasses the breaking down of information into the readable and easy transferable 0-1 computer binary focusing on the media gadgets that could encode and decode such as binary. So previous media technologies were updated and improved upon to accommodate this computerized version of information and communication production and the, uh, dissemination. Okay? So dito na na yung yung mga computers, okay? yung internet, nag-boom na talaga dito. So, uh, transmittal of information became faster and became more accessible to people. So this was this was evident in the way the personal computer evolved during the time when Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak of Apple, Apple fame, the IBM company, and later Bill Gates of Windows were introducing various models and prototypes of hardware and software during the 1970s. Okay, so dito na nag-start yung development ng computer. At yung ginagamit na nga natin ngayon. At until such time, na-develop na yung smartphone, which is like a portable computer at the palm of our hands. Okay? So, DSLR and uh, memory card naman uh, develop. Okay? DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Replace. And the way um, images and videos are recorded in this type of camera is that it's used Yan, yung mga flash card, okay, and memory cards, okay? Tapos yung transmittal of uh, data is pwedeng gamitin yung flash card and yung USB, okay? So, dito na nagtatapos ang ating discussion. So, thank you guys. I hope you learned something today. And I will leave this few words. Technology has been a pivotal or pivotal factor in shaping media. Okay, thank you and bye.